Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode. You might recall, not that long ago, I went to Colorado to visit my sister, Heather, and my new brother, Steve. It's weird to say new because he's older than me by about uh, seven years, <laughs> but he's new to me. Um, and I went there looking for all sorts of treasures and antiques because I love finding cool old stuff. And um, I, Steve and I went around looking at shops and stuff, but at the end of the day, the coolest stuff that I found was in Steve's own backyard. You see, um, his roommate works for a uh, junk place and basically would they clear out houses and stuff that I've done before myself too. And sometimes uh, things that are meant for the dumpster, they'll actually bring back. Let me show you, because my box of stuff finally arrived from Colorado, uh, let me show you what's inside that box. Well, I just got home and saw that my box from Colorado, the stuff that uh, came from my brother Steve, has arrived and it uh, was just kind of dumped on the ground by our door and it looks like it's been through war. That box is beat right up. They've wrapped it in plastic. I don't know what happened to it, but I'm gonna get it uh, loaded inside and hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll all be in one piece. I haven't been in Colorado in Ooh, three weeks or so so that thing has been floating around for a while out there let's get it indoors and show you guys what i got and hope that it's in okay shape still i feel like i'm gonna need a little table set up next to this because um that's a full box that's gonna be a full box full of stuff i am like i said concerned about the condition that it's in it's wobbling a little bit so I really hope that most things made it, but let me grab uh, a table and a knife and we'll open this up and see what's inside. All right, well, the box is open. I forgot, I knew that there was trains. I forgot there was other stuff like this 1930s era. Now, um, they did make a lot of replicas of these, but Based on the, the type of threads that were used in that, this might be original. I'm not 100% sold. It does have some corrosion on it. So I'll have to check that one over and see. Somebody's definitely touched up the headlights and that on it. But anyway, there's that. That's going to go on the table. Uh-oh. A little train car. Looks like it got a little squished. Let's see if I can kind of push it back into shape a little bit there. Do a little poor man's body work on it. It's a little better. Um, this is a really early, uh, very early American flyer. I believe this is American flyer. It might be Ives, actually. Let's see if there's a maker's market. Yeah, there it is right there, Ives. So Ives is quite an early American uh, uh, train, toy train company. And this would date to uh, around 1915 or so. Uh, the rest of the engine should be in here too. Let's see. Oh, here's something fun. Cap gun set. Ranger cap gun. But what's nice about this is the, uh, the very complete holster set. And I thought there was a second gun. I have parts for the, the other gun. I think it's in there somewhere, but what a nice kid set that is with all the studs and the detail work on it. So. That's pretty good. I think that came out of the trash. All right. Hmm. Oh, there's another. Another cap gun set. Again, nice leather set. Real fancy set. It's even got the little miniature uh, replica bullets in there. Now these, the plastic handles are, uh, missing I mean, i've got one of them but that's a pretty 
pretty nice holster for a kid set of cap guns. If you found a nicer set, I don't know. That's leather too. These might actually, I don't know these, I don't would doubt whether these are real um, holsters. That's meant for a kid, but that is super duper cool. All right. There was a whole bunch of sealed in the package American Flyer S gauge train cars. Now, um, this set here would date to probably the 1990s or 1980s, 1991. Kind of tell from the packaging when you look at it. And there was a whole pile of these. I just really don't know if they survived the trip. Sorry guys, I had to take it off the tripod. It was driving me crazy. <laughs> Everybody says, use a tripod. And I go, yeah, of course I've got a tripod. And then I go to use it and it drives me nuts. Oh boy. That one, the box got a little crunched, but I think the cars are okay in there. Anything that was kind of on this outer layer is a little risky, whether it uh, survived or not. Let's see, lots of American Flyer stuff. In fact, there's a, a whole nearly new American Flyer train set right there. I just have to be careful how I get this stuff out because, there we go, there's the Ives parlor car. We're gonna get all the Ives stuff together, the cap guns together and get it all organized here. This engine actually, uh, so don't be freaked out when you see it and go, oh my gosh, it got broken. These were parts engines that were kind of just uh, thrown in the mix. So they weren't in really great shape when I got them. So that's all right. Those are just project engines, bits and pieces and stuff. There might be enough parts here to put, make one complete engine. Oh, ah, there we go. But I figured I may as well save it because, uh, well, like I just said, you might need some parts and pieces off of these to, to make one engine out of them. And I can feel, there we go, some little bits and pieces there. So some junky toy trains. Remember, stuff was taken from the trash. And I'll never understand why somebody would throw out a 1900s Ives railway set. Hey, there's the engine right there, number 1118. So this, yeah, this again would date to right around 1914 to 17, somewhere in there. And I don't remember if the, the tender was in there, but I've got the engine, I've got the cars. Very early, oh, it's down at the bottom. Livestock car. Some of these little roof panels are not attached. I'm, I can't remember really what came with this stuff. And there we go. There's the tender. So that's almost complete. I'm gonna try getting some of these bigger boxes out of the way just so I can uh, give myself a little bit of room because I forgot just how packed this box was. You know, trying to save on shipping costs by sending one box rather than like 10. Oh, there's one that has the roof piece on it. It was a big set. Engine tender, five or six cars so far. Okay. Oh, where is the big boy? The American Flyer S gauge. Made in America. There's not many things are these days, sadly. But there's an S gauge electric train set in the original box, and it's the Western Pacific California Zephyr passenger set. So that'd be probably like a streamlined passenger set. As you can kind of see the silver schooner, Vista Dome car, probably a very nice set. Still sealed in the original plastic, that adds a lot to the value. So as much fun as it would be to take this out and have a look at it. Um, for collector, they're gonna prefer that it's still in the factory plastic so they know it's in absolutely pristine condition in there. Um, I'm gonna look up the price online and, and see what these go for. I'll probably try and add it in with a little cha-ching sound <laughs> up here somewhere when I edit this video. Uh, as of right now, I'm not sure exactly what that thing's worth, but it's a neat set. I had another one of these sets. It's not quite the same, but it's close. This is the Silver Flash set. And you get an idea of what sort of the passenger cars look like. I don't know if this came with uh, track as well, or transformer. I think it's just the, the engine, the, the diesel unit, the non-powered uh, dummy unit, and then you've got a few passenger cars. 
It's almost too bad I didn't get a bunch of track with this because I could have set this up around our tree at Christmas time. We had a nice line all set that we used to do that with and I sold it at the store thinking my kids were too big, but then I forgot that just because my kids are too big doesn't mean that I was too big. So I miss having a train around the tree. So I might have to uh, grab some track and a transformer so I can do that again this year. Okay, we'll set this aside. Let's see what else is going on in here. There's some race car sets. I had to kind of lean it down because uh, these set boxes were not in great shape to begin with. That's the uh, Revel Grand Prix home racetrack set. That box is pretty much disintegrated. Hang on, let me move this out of the way so you can see it better. Slot car racing was really big in the 1960s. You had Aurora model motoring, which made the first uh, HO size slot cars and then AFX became a big thing. But what was really popular around the time in the mid to late 60s was 132nd scale race cars. Now I'm gonna, <laughs> look, I can just move this box section because it's not attached. 132nd scale is that size. Now, most of the value in a race set like this, although it's nice to have the box, um, people would often come into the store and they'd say, you know, I've got this race set. And if it didn't have the cars, the set had very little value. Now, this guy's missing his head. Those guardrails must not have been on any. Ah! <laughs> um, but uh, the car itself is in decent shape. So more collectors would be interested in the cars themselves versus the uh, the complete box set. However, this is nice that it's all together. And uh, Revel is less common, I would say, than your Strombecker or Eldon sets, which we saw plenty of around here. So that's just a little bit more unusual. And this this car still is in decent shape. It's got the exhaust intact. His head is still there. Uh, he's got the windscreen. Clearly, he's going to win the race. Um, because his opponent has uh, lost his head. <laughs> so maybe I'll find his head rolling around in the bottom of the box. I'll have to look. Oh, look, here's the brochure. Sometimes they'd give you this little brochure to show you what other models they made. So this is telling you how the banks and the curves all went together and how everything went. Troubleshooting. Oh, it says just hook it right up to the transformer to check your car. Does it show you any other vehicles that they make? No, maybe just on the outside. That Aston Martin's kind of cool. There's a Corvette, looks like a Stingray, a Mercedes 300 SL, a Ferrari, Daytona. Ooh, some snazzy cars that they made. I would have been pretty happy to find a couple of those in here. But uh, none, nonetheless, this is probably like a Maserati or something like that. Open wheel race cars are still neat too. And this was the Grand Prix race set, so that's why thus it had the open wheel race cars. Pretty nifty. This was another set that was inside the box. And this, to be honest with you, is a little bit more unusual. It's made by Gilbert. And uh, Gilbert was an American manufacturer of toys. Most famously, they made erector sets, those metal construction sets you could put together and build a crane and what have you. But uh, I guess at this time, they wanted to get in on the slot car racing, um, you know, the, the whole, I, I guess, uh, theme. People were really getting into it back then. So let's see what we've got going on. Now they said uh, in this particular kit, you can customize your car. I thought that was pretty cool. 1962, May 1962. So we got the papers in it and I'm really hoping, okay, yeah, there we go. There are some bodies, a couple of hot rod kind of bodies, like 40 Ford sort of looking things. Let's see, Gilbert, official starter in the box. But are there chassis for the cars? And the answer is yes. There's one. And there is the other. There's an engine just in my hand. And there's another chassis there. So I guess uh, with their sets, they, they had it set together so you could actually build your own sort of vehicle from it and go racing. Neat. Again, Value is mostly in the cars, but um, this is a really neat set. And to be honest with you, I've never had a Gilbert uh, Autorama race set before. It's got, um, you know, like raised sections so you could do uh, Passovers, like a bridge. It's got all the track there. Really unusual, really cool set. And again, nice to have the box and all the instructions in that too. 
and only a couple cars there, which is okay. But at least there, there are two complete cars with that set. So that's another complete set right there. Again, somebody threw this out. In today's day and age, who throws all this stuff out? So I left my name and number with, uh, with Steve's friend and said, listen, you find anything else like this, I'll definitely buy it off you. Um, but one thing, uh, and there's other stuff that came in this box as well. Oh, I bought this at, I picked that up thinking that I could go to my friend who's into the uh, midget auto racing. Uh, oh, there's one of the cap guns. There's one of the Ranger cap guns right there. When I said, oh, I'm missing one of the guns. I guess I'm not. There it is. Uh, this, there's one piece in here that's my favorite. I'm going to take it out and show you right now. Right there. What's cool about this is it's porcelain enamel, Pepsi Cola sign. Pepsi did not make nearly as much stuff as Coca-Cola. When it comes to merchandising, you'll see... 100 coca-cola items compared to pepsi uh for every one pepsi one and they did reproduce this um as a replica so what's neat about this a it's it's embossed it's three-dimensional it's actually perforated like a real bottle cap it's porcelain enamel meaning it's a uh, pressed metal with uh, porcelain enamel paint on it a baked paint kind of like what you'd have on a toilet um well, maybe not, uh, you know, toilets would be more actual, like an old bathtub, like a, like a porcelain coated bathtub. There you go. It'd be cast iron and then they have the porcelain coating. Um, but you can see Registrata, this is not in English. The Pepsi part is, but this sign actually came from Mexico and it dates to 1955. So this is an original Mexican issue, uh, 1955 Pepsi Cola bottle cap sign. But there's something even more unique about it. This sign, um, my brother Steve let me walk around in his house because we we're talking about how we both collect stuff. And he picked this up relatively cheap somewhere along the line. And I, I said, you know, I, I have to ask because this is what I do, but would you consider selling it? Because I buy and sell this sort of stuff all the time. And he said, uh, yeah, I would sell it. So we, I gave him an offer, we agreed on a price. And then by the end of my trip, um, I was going to stop and grab cash and give it to him. He said, you know what? You can just have that. So because my brother gave this to me, I'm actually going to keep this for myself. I'm going to find a place of honor in my garage here and um, I'm going to hang it up proudly and remember digging around in my brother's basement. It was just a very kind gesture, a very nice thing of him to do. And honestly, probably it has moved its way up to my most favorite collectible because it came from Steve. Thanks, Steve. There we go. And it's new place of honor right by my door, right by the windows. Every time I look out this way, I'll be looking at that Pepsi sign as well, thinking of my brother, Steve. Gosh, I'm actually at the bottom, literally the bottom of the barrel. What do I have in here? Um, um, Toyota license plate surround from Illinois. <laughs> oh, look, there's another train wheel. Better keep that separate. We actually went to a uh, farmer's market and the guy was giving a bunch of stuff away for free that he got in a storage unit. So I got this little Fender Mustang micro guitar headphone amp so you can plug it in and not annoy your family. And although the box is uh, worse for wear, it's actually uh, still brand new in there, never been used. I'm the one who actually took the tape off this for the first time, but just transporting this from... Uh, Colorado is beating up that box a fair bit, but that's something I can actually use. There is a 12 inch Joker. Ha <laughs> ha. The old school looking Joker. Pretty neat. And let's see. Oh, just generic kind of stuff at the bottom. Oh, there's another, there's a roof off of a train car little dart gun probably from the 1950s the way i can tell that is made in hong kong it doesn't say made in china it's made in hong kong later they'd say made in china and you could date that to being you know 1970s or up yeah it's not in bad shape i wonder if it still works it doesn't feel like it's broken but it still has spring hmm. 
And yeah, I guess the rest of the stuff, like guitar pedal and whatever else, I'll have to sort through. Oh yeah, this was kind of neat too. Hang on, let's see if I can dig this out of the bottom. Oh! Part of a switch, a train switch. It's a railway spike and there's a tiny little train, a tiny little pewter train about to run out of tracks. <laughs> but somebody's made a tiny little train and put it on that railway spike. Isn't that ever neat? And if you're into trains, which this person obviously was, um, it's kind of a neat item. So there's a pile of stuff and some of it brand new and all of it saved from the trash. Um, when we add it up all together, I would say the American Flyer sets are probably going to come back at a few hundred dollars a piece in uh, beings that they're from the 90s and still in great shape. So there's actually three sets, two with outer set boxes, one still sealed, one that's loose. So, you know, possibly 900 bucks there, maybe a hundred and a half uh, on a good day, maybe like 75 bucks for this beat up Revel one, probably like a little over a hundred for the Gilbert set. And the cap guns, the turn of the century I've set, that's probably worth a couple hundred dollars on its own. So we, we pulled probably uh, over a thousand dollars worth of merchandise that was saved from the trash. I did buy it from uh, this fellow, so it's not like I got it for free myself, but he did. So he did okay. Um, and I'll have enough room to make some profit on it myself too. So all in all, a lot of fun stuff out of Colorado. So thanks for watching today's unboxing video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll try and add some actual prices in with these items uh, on the video so that uh, you can see what things are roughly worth. But uh, for me, what I found going through all the antique stores is that you go to the antique malls, there's neat stuff, but it's priced super high. You go to a flea market, you can find a few treasures, but it really takes a lot of effort. And apparently, all I gotta do is talk to my brother, Steve, and he has all the connections for all this stuff at wholesale pricing. <laughs> so I guess if I go back again, I'm going straight to Steve and hanging out with his friends because they know where all the good stuff is. Anyway, guys, it was a fun adventure. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all soon. And as always, bye for now. Bye, guys.